Okay, just as promised, let's go. Coffee is ready, we need a refill. You gonna help me this time or what? Yes, no, maybe so? All right, come turn around, it's right over here. Come on, this time we're doing a radial engine. Look at that. I'm not sure if this thing spins or not, but okay, let's get started. And cue the elevator music, everybody's favorite. Okay, let's go. Once again, from Engine DIY, they have sent me out another wonderful engine, this time a radial engine, five piston. Comes in a very sturdy metal box and lots of padding, and you got quality assurance right there, QC. All the components are metal, comes with the toolkit as well as all the hardware needed. This model brings back lots of memories and nostalgia because the last time I actually touched a piston engine was back in A&P school. I think it was a Lycoming or a Continental, a flat six off of a Cessna 172. Model itself is very detailed. Everything from rocker arms to push rods, even the spark plugs are there. And of course, the most important thing of all, the maintenance manual or the assembly manual, which is very well written. Before we begin, I always tell you guys up front how much it costs and where you can get it from. Here it is. This one is actually one of their moderately priced ones. Pretty affordable if you like this kind of stuff. And as a side note, guys, I just want to remind you, I don't get paid for this kind of stuff. I'm not sponsored by any of this. I just like to build engine models, and this company is very kind enough to always send me out one. So if you can afford it, go for it. If you enjoy this kind of stuff. If you can't, don't worry. Just enjoy the video. We begin by assembling the pistons, five of them, obviously. One thing to note on this build, lots of lubrication is going to be needed. A lot of moving parts. As I was building this model, I realized that there's either five or ten of everything here. So best practice here is create your own little assembly line. Up next is the case itself, and then we're going to install the main crankshaft. This was actually the most difficult portion of the build. Assembling the pistons around this area was kind of a challenge, but I figured it out. Check this out. So this is really interesting. I'm having, I'm already running into problems. So got the pistons assembled and okay. So there's a detent for top dead center or the controlling the master cylinder, master piston. So there was always a number one, but you need to put these like this through this and then <laughs> somehow get this. Obviously I'm using one hand right now. I was using both hands, but anyway, you have to align this and then there it goes. Align it and put the pin right there and you gotta assemble all of these like that and then put the cap on top. Now, everything is like that. This is gonna be interesting. I need to figure something out, rig something up. It's all right, we'll figure this out. Okay, I figured it out. I had to poke a hole through the bottom of the styrofoam, kind of push it in. So now I have a place to arrange my, my uh, pistons as such and put the rod or the pin through and it's not gonna move anywhere, hopefully, like that. Anyway, we're gonna arrange all of these and then put this doodad on there like so and it will hold all the pistons together. Okay, so far so good, I figured that one out. Let's keep on trucking. Managed to get all the pistons in, we put the cap on and secure it with the hardware. Let's go. There you go, it worked, it worked. Okay, let's keep on going back to time lapse. This one was uh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's, it's coming out really cool. Anyway, let's go. Once that's done, now we begin to work on the aft casing of this and where the actual motor goes. And yeah, I figured it out. This thing actually does spin. It has a little electric motor. And I'm gonna emphasize again, lubrication is needed consistently on every single one of these components. Use something like a light oil. I ended up using WD-40. And here's some generic information about radial engines or any piston engine. They are internal combustion engines. The same concept as any turbine engine. Intake, compression, spark and fuel, combustion and exhaust. Biggest difference is that turbine engines have a continuous burn. Piston engines require continuous spark. Okay, progress report, let's see now. We got the planetary gearbox, or it looks like a planetary. I'm sure it's not. It's not. Got the pistons installed. Got the motor. Apparently, this thing spins. It's apparently it spins. It's got an electrical connector. So, 
Up next, we're gonna do, let's see now. Gonna install the propeller, and the propeller is beautiful on this thing. A gorgeous red anodized propeller. So yeah, that's up next. That's going right there. <laughs> I am having way too much fun with this. Anyway, anyway, I'm gonna do this properly. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera down. Anyway, movie magic, let's go. In comparison to the other models, this one's actually really easy to build and I had a lot of fun with it. Now we move on to the rocker arms. As I mentioned before, try to set up a little assembly line for yourself because there's 10 of them. Once I had them set up, you'll see me assembling the cylinder heads themselves, plus the spark plugs and all the other fun stuff. One thing I remember from a &P school is that we used to disassemble Continental flat six engines. We'd take them all apart, inspect all the internals, use our depth gauges, use any kind of micrometers to make sure all the gaps are correct, document all of it, and put it back all together. Very tedious work when it comes to general aviation aircraft, especially if you're a technician rebuilding these engines. Part of a &P school and it's the power plant portion of it. You learn components, you learn how to use the proper tooling, and most importantly, you learn how to use maintenance manuals as well as illustrated parts catalogs. Well, so we're now we're starting to assemble the cylinder blocks and I can't stress enough for this build how much lube you actually need. Yeah, you got to lubricate all of these um, fastener. Man, this, this kid. Yeah, I know. I mentioned it like three times already, but trust me, it's important for this model to work properly. Anyway, let's keep on going. These are the cylinder heads, as you can see, installing these as well as installing the spark plugs. If you look closely, they actually even have valves that open up and close, the intake and exhaust valve. It's very enjoyable to see this minute amount of detail into these models. We're down to the home stretch here. We got the cylinder heads finished up and we're gonna install it onto the cylinder itself. After which we're gonna put it onto the block and slide the pistons in. Now, when it comes down to reality and comparison, there's a lot more complicated components that are involved such as piston rings and bushings. And on top of that, compression checks. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, notice the fins on the cylinder itself. Well, these engines, radial or any kind of modern engine that you have that are flying around on your Cessna 172s or 150s, they're air-cooled. Also, most of these modern propeller engines are direct port injection and usually have dual spark plugs timed by a magneto. Everything is coming together nicely. I even installed some of the push rods. Since this is a radial engine, the cam itself is on the inside. It is called a cam plate that is concentric with the crankshaft. As the crankshaft turns, it will spin the cam plate, which has little divots on it. The divot will push the push rods up and then the rocker arms will move, opening and closing the valves, the intake and the exhaust valves. Well, if you made it this far, we are completing the build. Now we got to figure out how to make it turn. Well, guess what, guys? We actually got it done. Record time. I'm getting good at this. Almost took me about three, three and a half hours. Not bad at all. Everything turns. Everything works. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. The pistons are going. The push rods up and down. The rocker arms are going. Oh, my God. This is reminding of me of my a &P days. It's supposed to turn on its own, apparently, because I have it plugged in. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the battery's dead or I hooked it up incorrectly, but it's supposed to turn. I'm gonna let it charge a little more. Hopefully it works. Maybe it's me, it's operator error. But overall, the model itself is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy with this. This, this thing is just, look at that. That is just something else, man. Beautiful, beautiful. After doing a little bit of troubleshooting, I noticed I hooked up a couple of wires incorrectly, but I fixed that and the model began to turn. I even charged it overnight. Came out wonderful. Check this out. And of course, we got to say it. Clear prop.
Well, folks, that is it for this one. Thank you all so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And a big, big thank you to Engine DIY for sending this out. I will see you guys on the next Stig project. All right, Stig signing out. Later.